Hey guys and welcome back. So today another very short and simple video. How to upgrade your existing Zabbix installation to the recent version of the Zabbix 6.0. And to do that right now, today I have the version of the Zabbix 5.0.20 minor release and we'll actually be doing an upgrade to the 6.0 in this video, all steps explained. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Again, uh, I do have just a test setup with basically an empty database, so it will take uh, much less time than in production. But again, it's not very complicated. You should not be worried about it. It's some spaceship technology and requires a lot of knowledge. First thing that you need to know is that if let's say you're coming from the version 5.0 uh, like like in this tutorial case there is a high chance that your operating system is CentOS 7 as example or maybe CentOS 8 and the thing is that in the Zabbix 6.0 these versions are not supported anymore so there is a chance that you will have to migrate uh, your Zabbix uh, monitoring solution to a new uh, operating system and I will link a video here uh, somewhere up in the cards I've already made a video when we're talking about uh, operating system choice for the Zabbix 6.0. And the second important thing is database support. So again, uh, Zabbix 6.0 has upped uh, the version requirements um, for the databases for the Zabbix server. So as example for the MySQL, it is 8.0 or anything newer than that. If you're running on an older database engines, you have basically two options. First of all, you can upgrade your database version, and I do recommend to do that, despite that it will require a little bit of additional work, or you you will have a chance to uh, change parameter in a Zabbix server config file that will actually allow you to uh, use a deprecated database version. And again, I will link uh, the video about database choice in a Zabbix 6.0 here up uh, in the cards. So so let's get started. So uh, what do we need? Uh, first of all, we will of course need a CLI to the database and uh, we will need a documentation. So a good thing that Zabbix has a documentation and what we need to do is choose the version 6.0 of course, then uh, installation, upgrade procedure, upgrade from packages for this video and uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux CentOS. Uh, CentOS. I actually have Oracle Linux 8, but uh, it's basically the clone of the Red Hat Linux, so the commands will be the same. Then right here we have a page where we need to choose like upgrade from which version, 5.4, 5.2 or 5.0. Uh, very important to read full upgrade notes. So you definitely in a production should go through the upgrades notes of the 5.2, 5.4, check what is actually changing what things have changed in the Zabbix, maybe some functionality doesn't exist anymore, maybe some functionality works differently right now and there is some automatic uh, transformation of the configuration data during the upgrade process, you need to be aware of that because when the upgrade will happen, that's it, you're done, you're on a version 6.0 and if you're not prepared for all of the new functionalities or the things, how they may look or something like that, you might get lost and uh, yeah, maybe even get some downtime or don't monitor some items simply because you didn't check everything that uh, has changed in these versions. And getting back to the database, so if we would go to the 6.0 release notes, there is a section databases and you can see, so these are the supported ones, so MySQL 8.0x and I have MySQL 8.0 in my test environment. And basically by default, Zabbix server and proxy will not start if any unsupported database version is detected, but it is possible to turn off this DB checking by editing allow unsupported DB versions in a configuration file for the server proxy. So if you don't plan to do this upgrade and you plan to remain on deprecated database version, which is not good at all, then you can of course use this parameter. Then what's next? So uh, what do we need to do? Red Hat Enterprise, basically just scroll down and we will find the list of all the procedures and steps that we have to do uh, to perform this upgrade. First of all, stop the Zabbix server. So yeah, that, that is basically a mandatory thing. Uh, System CTL stop Zabbix server because the upgrade procedure is happening with the database. So upgrading a server package is 
just an easiest part and it will take like five seconds but the most major upgrade procedure is happening with the database and we don't want our Zabbix server to continue monitoring and drop in some history data while we're actually performing some operations on a DB. So back up the existing Zabbix database. Remember the core of the Zabbix monitoring solution is database and all the configuration data is inside the database, all the history data is inside and there's no uh, rollback option if let's say you as example forgot to read the release notes you performed an upgrade then you open the Zabbix and find out that you don't understand uh, all the new things and you're like absolutely lost and you want to go back you must have a backup for these cases there's no button like uh, Control z to undo the changes and get back to your 5.0 so before actually uh, making an upgrade even attempt to do the upgrade make a full uh, backup of your existing database full i mean uh, configuration data and also history data yes it might take a lot of time it will take a lot of disk space especially if that is a production instance but that's what you should what you should do and then configuration file backup so etsy zabbix server and uh, etsy httpd con the zabbix conf so these would be the Zabbix server configuration file and the config file for the Zabbix frontend. Um, this is like recommended to do everything as per best practices. Again, if while we are upgrading the packages, we mess something up and let's say we lose our existing config files and I will show them here like on the screen. So let's say Etsy Zabbix server conf and in the production, you might have this tuned with all the parameters, like how many polars you need, how many trappers, uh, how many discoverers and preprocessors and stuff like that. So to tune these settings according to your load on your production instance, it is not the easiest to work. It takes some fine tuning to min max and find those good spots. So you don't want to lose that data. That's why it is recommended to um, make a backup of these config files. I will not do that because uh, Again, I have a clean installation of the Zabbix 5.0 and uh, there are no changes. Uh, next, PHP file and a Zabbix binaries. Again, it is a best practice, but uh, in this case, we could say that it is optional if you're using official um, default frontend files and the Zabbix binaries. Like even if something goes wrong and you mess up your frontend files or the Zabbix binaries, you can always just download and install them again from the Zabbix repository, which is taking like 10 seconds probably. If you have some modifications, let's say some customized patches to your front end or modified sources for your Zabbix server and you're compiling from the sources, then of course you want to make a backup of those uh, of those files and also for um, the new version if you're upgrading to the 6.0 and if you really need to apply these patches once again to the new version of the Zabbix 6.0 LTS then you need to verify that the patches will actually work for the version 6.0 and most likely they won't so you will have to uh, modify your patch files and uh, change them a little bit to adopt them for the source files of the 6.0. Then we need to update repository configuration package and we can either copy paste it from here or basically we could also go to the Zabbix.com uh, download section, choose 6.0 LTS, Red Hat Enterprise Linux or Oracle Linux operating system version in my case is 8, uh, database is MySQL and I also have Apache web server and I will remain it uh, as it is. So we can also do it from here. So just copy paste this line and uh, paste it to your CLI, click enter. This will update uh, our uh, repository from the version 5.0 to the version 6.0. Then we can type yum clean all and yum make cache to make sure that these changes in the repository are actually reflected. Otherwise, uh, some data might be cached. And let's say we kind of added the repository of 6.0, we try to um, <clears throat> install the new packages, but it is still saying that the latest one is like 5.0. So after that, we can go back, uh, upgrade Zabbix components. This is uh, basically one of two steps that you need to do. Uh, so right now, again, let's, let's wait for this command to finish. I'll probably fast forward. 
There we go. So I will clean the screen and we can type, let's say, Zabbix server minus capital V. We can see that the version is 5020 and we want this 6.0 LTS. So first of all, we need to upgrade our Zabbix server package, Zabbix web package, and the web in our case is uh, 5020 right? It is flashing that the Zabbix server is not running because we stopped it at the beginning of this video. And a Zabbix agent is just for just again, best practices, uh, probably. So just copy paste this command. Um, Zabbix server MySQL because I have a MySQL database engine. If you have a Postgres, then you have to choose Zabbix dash server dash Postgres. And same for the Zabbix web. And minus yes to actually confirm everything on the fly. So this will take I don't know, depending on the speed of your internet, probably like some seconds, maybe a minute uh, to do the upgrade of the packages. And again, I will fast forward this. There we go. So we've installed uh, the Zabbix Agent 6.0, Zabbix Web Dependencies, Apache Web MySQL, Server MySQL, and a web. So let's check what's next. Um, if using Postgres, substitute MySQL into Postgres, of course, to upgrade the web front end with Apache on RHEL 8 correctly, also run this command. We have Oracle Linux 8, not a RHEL 8, but again, those are basically the clones and we're using the same packages. So I will also run this command. So copy paste, yum installs Avix Apache conf and uh, nothing to do. So it's already installed. So it picked up with, with some, some of the dependencies. So we're good with this. Then uh, make any necessary changes to this file to upgrade the web front and uh, don't need it. Review components configuration parameters. Uh, see the upgrade notes for details on mandatory changes. So now we can actually check the Zabbix server config file and search here for, I think it was dbv. It's not here. Uh, let's try to find it here in the Zabbix. Uh, yeah, it's RPM new. So what we will do is uh, I will remove the Zabbix server dot conf and move Zabbix server conf RPM new to Zabbix server dot conf. Uh, you will not have this problem. Uh, I have this problem simply because I had the leftover configuration file of the Zabbix server in this directory. That's why it over overwrote like uh, RPM new. So uh, vim Zabbix server dot conf. And uh, here we should have a DBV version. So if you are using not supported database version, which is not recommended highly, uh, you can still allow the server to start with this unsupported version. And to do that, you need uh, just allow unsupported DB version. Uh, basically, uh, where it is here, uh, just copy paste the here uncomment and change the value to one. I will not save it because again, I have my SQL 8 for this task. Review all the configuration parameters of your Zabbix server config file. And then we just need to start the packages. So we can start system CTL start uh, Zabbix agent, of course, which uh, just started uh, the upgraded version. So we can see 6.0. And then the most important part is to start uh, system CTL start Zabbix dash server. And when we start the new server, which is 6.0, again, in this case, in the log file, we will see that after the start, the server actually access denied. Uh, so we didn't specify the, um, the password. So we need to go to the Zabbix server.conf and here we'll find uh, db, uh, db password should be somewhere in the beginning. There we go. db password, copy paste, type in Zabbix, save, and I will do the restart again of the Zabbix uh, server. I think it's going to be fine this, in this case. And there we go. So we actually started uh, the Zabbix server 6.0. All the features are included using the configuration file in the Etsy Zabbix, Zabbix server.conf. And you see, so the Zabbix server of the version 6.0, the binary one, noticed that the current version of the database is 5.0, but the version of the binary is 6.0. So there must be an upgrade happening. And the Zabbix server starts to upgrade automatically, which is just showing the percentage 
and uh, there we go so database upgrade fully completed database could be upgraded to use primary keys in a history tables and we'll talk about this a little bit later starting high availability manager so yeah remember the zabbix 6.0 also introduces the native high availability and that's it we have zabbix server 6.0 um and my typing skills are bad today uh there we go 6.0 we also need to start uh system ctl start httpd and php fpm right then we can go to the front end you must log in because we just upgraded everything so we must log in again and there we go in the bottom we can see that we have zabex 6.0.0 uh, with all the new functionality with the uh, BSM for business service monitoring, uh, new widgets in the dashboards and stuff like that. So, and getting back about the last part about the primary keys, uh, let me try to find it. Primary keys here. So in the upgrade notes, primary keys are now used for all the tables, including the history tables and new installations. So when you're installing Zabbix 6.0 from the scratch, uh, not upgrading the version, but just doing the clean installation, uh, the primary keys are already there. However, if you're doing an upgrade, it is a manual thing that you need to do. And uh, uh, yeah, primary keys in pre-existing installations are av available. So probably you can click here and we will find, um, yeah, so this is the location where uh, the SQL file is located. Uh, let me try to just do it like this. So CD uh, user share doc Zabbix SQL scripts and my SQL in our case. So in this directory, we have a file. So we don't have a file seen in my SQL directory, but I think I already figured out why is that. So nothing here. And uh, because we actually need to install additional package and this package is called Zabbix SQL scripts. So let's try it. Let's go back to the CLI. Yeah, I'm install and I'll just copy paste Zabbix SQL scripts. Uh, yeah, there is one package found. So clicking yes. And I think that in this package, we will actually have those SQL files that will allow us to upgrade our database and to add primary keys to the history tables. So this is done. Let us check the folder once again. And there we go. So double precision, history, primary keys, prepare.sql, um, and just a proxy and a server schema. So we can log into the MySQL and uh, check uh, use Zabbix and let's say show create table history. So you can see there is just a key and uh, a key on the item ID at clock and uh, basically that's it. So close this. Again, uh, quit. And uh, so let's do what uh, our documentation says to us. Where did we had information? So MySQL use Zabbix. We can basically just do it like this. So we have a MySQL directory and we will read the history primary key prepare.sql pipe it to our MySQL Zabbix database. I am not specifying the username and a password because my root uh, user on a MySQL doesn't have any password. So click enter and done. So let's go back to the MySQL again, use Zabbix and show create table history. There we go. Now we have a primary key item ID clock and nanoseconds. So be aware with this, like if you have a huge installation with a lot of the history data, um, hundreds of gigabytes or maybe terabytes, this operation, um, again, let me quit. Uh, this operation could actually take a lot of time. I'm talking about hours and multiple hours. In my case, it was very simple because I basically don't have any history. This is just a demo installation, a lab environment, but in a production, you should be careful. If you want to do that, you're able to do and use this uh, SQL patch at any time. You're not required to do that right after an upgrade. So maybe you can do an upgrade, make sure that everything works fine. And then in the next maintenance period of your company or whatever else, after a month or two, you can actually apply this uh, primary key patch. So that's about it. We have a Zabbix 6.0 uh, server front end Zabbix agent updated databases updated, everything went fine, we're able to use new functionality. So 
I hope that this will help you to actually perform an upgrade. If you have some questions on something isn't working, then just leave a comment. Otherwise, if you want to support uh, this channel and see more videos, then just don't forget to click the like button, subscribe and uh, all the usual stuff that people usually ask after the YouTube videos. So thank you guys and goodbye.